range. So what we're going to do is uh, we can either uh, use this um, opacity up here within the uh, um, the actual rain, or we can just go down here into the rain, hit T for the opacity, and just bring it down a little bit. Okay, and let me just name this scratches. <clears throat> okay, so this is what we got so far. Let's see here, what else do we have to do here? I have to make the splotches. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, a new solid. Uh, I'm going to make this one red. I'll show you why in a second. It's no big deal. I mean, originally it's, it's going to become black in the end, but I'm just doing it red so we can see what we're doing. Hit OK. Uh, select the layer. Uh, Control Shift C to pre-compose pre it, and we're going to name this Blotch. God, if anyone's ever seen my other videos, you know I'm a horrible speller. Splotch. There we go. Okay. So hold down the Alt, -cli uh, alt key, double click on Splotch to open up the composition, and we're going to change the composition settings. I'm going to make this 200 by 200, and select the layer. Go up to Layer, Solid Settings. Click on Make Comp Size, OK, and uh, that's it. We're just using this as a place setter. That that the, the all, that's all that red solid is is a place setter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to our mask, layer mask, and I'm going to click on the star tool, and I'm going to make make sure red solid is not selected. Make sure it is not selected. In fact, we can just remove it all, all together, and I'm going to go in the middle of the uh, frame here. Click and I'm going to make a star and I'm going to change the fill color to red so we can see what we're doing. And in the shape layer where the star is, click on contents, poly star, poly star path one. The first one is points. I'm going to raise the points up to I believe it was 50. Then I'm going to go to the inner radius which is the solid part on the inside of the star and I'm going to bring that out so it's just little spiky sticking out on the edge and I'm just going to leave the outer radius the way it is. Um, inner roundness is where the uh, inside of the spikes are. You'll, you'll see um, inner roundness play with it. You can see the inside gets round. So you can do that a little bit. Outer roundness is where the spikies they get round so you'll play with that a little bit. And now what we're going to do is go back to our effect controls, make sure layer selected, and I'm just going to blur it out a little bit. So go to fast blur, bring it up. You still want to see those spikies. And zoom out. And I'm going to select layer, right click, distortion, distort, and I'm going to go to liquify. And choose your, your brush. I'm going to bring this down, see where's my uh, warp tool options, brush size, I'm going to bring down a little bit to 30. You want it large enough to, to um, smear up a good portion of it. You don't want it too small because it'll take forever, and you don't want it too big because it'll just make a mess. All you do is just you know, make a, a dirty looking splotch. You know, maybe like an, make it look like an oil slicker. Remember this, this part is going to be like a uh, like a dirty, worn-out smudge on the uh, on the film that's you know, you know, worn away or something like that. So, random smudgy thingy. Okay, that'll look good. Let me just bring that a little bit. Uh, there we go. That'll work. Okay, and all we have to do to change the color here, the reason why I made it red is because I just wanted to make sure I'm seeing what I'm doing. So I'm just going to select the layer, <coughs> go up to its fill, fill color, and turn it black. And that's all we need. So let's go to our back to our original clip, and here we have our nice little splotch. Now this is going to take some work because we got to really got to do some. Uh, uh, random expressions on this one for its position, its scale, its rotation, its opacity. Um, for the position we want to randomize its X and Y position so every frame it shows up in a completely different position from the 
um, one before. Scale, we want it to uh, randomly scale each frame so it doesn't look exactly the same. Rotation, we want it to rotate, uh, or when, when it appears in a frame, we want it to be rotated rotated in a different fashion from the previous because uh, it'll fool your eye because if it stays, even the different scales, if it stays in the same uh, rotation, um, your eye will notice it eventually and it'll just look like the same object. So by rotating it, it fools your eye. Um, then we have to do the opacity because we don't want it completely black all the time because then it'll just, it'll look crappy. So we're going to, a lot of randomizations here. So let's start with the position. So let's go to P for, for position. I'll click the stopwatch. And let's resize the expressions area. Now this one we're actually going to, uh, what we're going to do here is, because I want this in a random, okay, let's, let's, let's start with the Y position, uh, the X position, uh, Y position. I want, I'm sorry, X position. I'm sorry, my brain is just going here. Um, so I want this, ac this spot here to end up in a random position every frame between 0 and 720. If we leave the value for x here at 360, I'll have to do some adding and subtracting and stuff like that. And it'll just be a pain in the ass, and in the end it just might actually be... Um, there's more room for error, um, because it'll look at this value, and that would mean I'd have to... You know, to make 0, I'd have to sub subtract 360, and to make it to you know, 720, I'd have to add 360. And it's just easier to turn the values you know, for a clean start from zero to zero. And in After Effects, your zero position is the upper left-hand corner, zero, zero. And then it goes up from there as you go out. So leaving it at zero, zero, you're basically starting starting fresh and clean. And we're going to uh, go to uh, X equals and we're just going to pick with the x value and then we're just going to uh, add our randomized value right here and plus random value um, I want it to be within the actual frame so if I hit zero it's going to be partially off the edge of the frame sometimes so I want to keep it for the most part inside the, uh, the, the frame so I'm going to 10 um, 7, 10, yeah, because 720 minus 10. Uh, semicolon, y equals, pick with the y value, plus random 10, comma, uh, 480 minus 10 is 470. Close parentheses, semicolon. Whoop! I'm sorry, that's X there is supposed to be a Y. And all we have to do is combine them together so After Effects can read it right. X comma Y. Close bracket. Close out. There we go. So every frame, splotch is jumping everywhere. Let's see here. So let's... I just want to see where all what all I have scripted in. There we go. Okay, so let's... I'm going to take this random here, and I'm just going to go over to my text layer. I'm just going to add this in so you can read it. Um, and this is for the opacity of, oh, what it was. The flicker, the flicker opacity. Okay, let's go back to the clip. Sorry, let me just close things up here. Okay, so that's our position value. Now let's hit the S for the scale value. And again, Alt-click the uh, stopwatch. And um, we got to figure out what we're going to do here. Because the uh, we want it to scale in both the X and Y position. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a little added thing um, with the uh, um, um, different types uh, of 
values with the expressions. Um, a scalar value would be something like your rotation or your opacity.